really if I'm, I'm reading Michael Lewis's new book, Boomerang, um, and what's interesting to me is a, a fundamental point he makes, which is our subprime crisis um, did a lot of damage to our banks, but the government could still bail the banks out. Here you have countries that are actually destroying their banking system. Exactly. Can the Eurozone survive with countries like Greece failing to meet its budget targets? It, it can, but it's gonna, this is a wrenching moment that they're going through. They, they, they've got to have, uh, uh, you know, as they say in Southern Delaware, an altar call here. They've got to figure out, are they willing to take the risk needed to take to maintain this union? Um, and our belief is, our belief is, they can. And our belief is they will, and our ardent hope is that they will. But, you know, it's interesting to me, if you read Boomerang, and I have not read it, I've read, I, I, I haven't even purchased it yet, but a lot of talk about it. Um, if you think about what our Republican friends are talking about now, I listened to, and he, and he really is a friend, John Vaynerd's speech to the, I think it was the chamber, and he talked about liberating the economy. The last time we liberated the economy, we put the middle class in shackles. The fact of the matter is everything they're talking about are the very things that got us in trouble. Release, liberate Wall Street from the new constraints on them. Talk about how we're going to increase tax cuts for people, particularly at the upper end. Talk, I mean, all of the things that we tried before and the very things that got us where we are are the things that are being proposed. And we have to have a head-on debate in this country about there's frustration that what we've done has not totally corrected the problem, that people are still hurting. And we understand that. But there has to be a debate here whether we continue along the path we're talking about and make the kind of changes that we have been unable to make, like fair distribution of the tax burden in this country. I was just watching CNBC on as I as I came in in, in the in the whole room, and they had a corporate uh, guy on there talking to the uh, squawk box or whatever whatever the program is, saying, you know, the problem is they were talking about corporate tax cuts. We, we think corporations should pay it 28 percent and make us more competitive worldwide. But the problem is, as this guy pointed out, he said industries are paying at 35 percent, but the financial sector is paying at 20 percent. And so our problem now is getting everybody to get in the game here. It's not that we're slowing up corporate tax reform. Corporations are in disagreement because they're going to be winners and losers. And look, you know, we talk about the Buffett rule. I call it the Reagan rule. Not the Buffett rule. I, I, I came along with a little quote, okay? This is Ronald Reagan, 1985. In theory, some of those loopholes are understandable, but in practice, they sometimes made it possible for millionaires to pay nothing while the bus driver was paying 10% of his salary, and that's crazy. Do you think the millionaire ought to pay more? Don't you think the, the, the millionaire should pay more than the bus driver, or do you think he should pay less? It's all this stuff about us talking about, you know, class warfare. Give me a break. But most millionaires do pay more. I mean, that's oh, been, no, that's no, been look, looked at. Warren Buffett's a bit of an outlier. By the way, know? no, no, no. Most millionaires, all millionaires, not all, the vast majority of millionaires pay more money than the bus driver. But on a, on a progressive tax stage, they don't pay at the rate they should pay. And so if you have what Warren Buffett was really talking about is his effective tax rate, I think, I forget what he said it was, 17, 18, 20 percent, whatever. And his secretary making 55,000 bucks or whatever it was is paying at 28 percent. That is not what Teddy Roosevelt had in mind. That's not what has been the process for the last hundred years. Let me ask you a question about what's happening in Wall Street right now on the streets outside on Wall Street. Uh, the Occupy Wall Street protest movement. Do you and the president stand in solidarity with those protesters? Look, <laughs> you know, but I, I think that's a really fair question. Let's, let, let's be honest with one another. What is the core of that protest? And why is it increasing in terms of the people it's attracting? The core is the bargain has been breached with the American people. The core is the American people do not think the system is fair or on the level. That is the core of what you're seeing on Wall Street. And that's what, that's what started, by the way. There's a lot in common with the Tea Party. The Tea Party started, why? TARP. They thought it was unfair. We we're bailing out the big guys. 
What are the people up there on the other end of the political spectrum saying the same thing? Look, guys, the bargain is not on the level anymore in the minds of the vast majority of the American, the middle class is being screwed. Are, are banks the problem in this economy? Banks are part of the problem in the economy. But, but look, why do you think, I, I know you know, but there's this overwhelming gut reaction to Bank of America putting in a $5 fee. Now look, the American people know, they don't guess, they know. The reason the CEO of the Bank of America or any other buddy in that business is in the business is because they, that guy making 50000 bucks, bailed him out. Bailed him out. Put his financial security on the line when his government said we're going to come up with a trillion plus dollars to bail him out. And then they turn around and they say, by the way, we're likely only projected to make seven or eight or whatever it is, $17 billion next year. But you know what? Here we're going to do. The middle class folks, these guys with these debit cards are on their back and we're going to charge them five bucks more to use a debit card. At a minimum, they are incredibly tone deaf. At a minimum. And at a maximum, they are not. They are not paying their fair share of the bargain here. And middle class people are getting killed. But lead editorial in the Wall Street Journal this morning said, hey, wait a minute, uh, Mr. President, Mr. Vice President, they're responding to your rules. Hey, no, are no. they not supposed to be profitable <clears throat> when there are restrictions on um, overdraft protection and, and so forth? Look, that's a little bit like saying uh, to my kid, I say, look, here's the deal now. I not only don't want you driving the car when you don't have a license, and I've now caught you and I'm stopping you from doing that. And my son says, well, I can't do that anymore, so now I've got to steal a car. Um, I've got to get around somehow. <laughs> do you know what I mean? Um, come on. But I mean, wait, what, what we stop them from is that, doing... Is that really, is that really yeah, the analogy no, no. you want to make? I Look, mean, it, yeah, yeah. No, no, but no, I'm asking seriously no, because no, you're I'm suggesting that it's cr- uh, somehow... Oh, it's not a crime. Yeah, I know you're not suggesting that, even though that was the analogy. But the, 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 <laughs> you're suggesting that, that they're wrong in seeking to make a profit in a different way based on new regulation. And you know, yes, yes. there's people who are going to hear this who say, you see, this is the problem with these guys. They're fundamentally any business. Hey, guess what? 99% of the American people aren't going to think that. I am not worried about how that's going to be perceived by anybody listening to this program. What I am worried about is the failure of the banks to understand that in a circumstance where it was viewed by the Congress responding to the American people that the tax in effect that was being placed on their purchase of goods when they in fact swiped a card is now forcing them to go out there and force add another fee when they're already making a profit. The question is, you can make a lot more profit. There's a lot of things they can do. Well, at least, look, at least when, um, when you charge an extra for bags on airlines, people are really angry. But they have heard for the last 25 years how, bank, how airlines are going bankrupt. So they go, I hate this, I don't want to do it, but I guess if I don't do it, the airline's going to go bankrupt. Nobody thinks the banks are going bankrupt right now. All they're thinking about is, hey, guess what? They're a lot more liquid than they ever were, and they're not lending any money. That's what they're thinking. So you can't blame the American people for feeling an overwhelming sense of frustration at this moment when they're hanging on by their fingernails, and all of a sudden they come along and say, okay, even though we're going to make a healthy profit next year, we think we have to have this additional income coming in. Let me ask you about accountability when it comes to the economy. The president's job approval rating stands at 42 percent. Uh, the view of uh, his and, by extension, your handling of the economy um, is pretty low. Now, either the big efforts that you made as an administration turned the economy around, or they didn't, and they appear to not have done that, either you're accountable or there's only so much government can do. Look, it's, uh, it's, it's two things. If you look at all the polls that you cited before as well, a clear majority of the American people blame their financial straits on the last administration. They understand what got us in this trouble. They understand it was no regulation, no documentation loans, these wacky instruments that they're taking risk on, being leveraged 10, 20, 30 to 1, etc. So they get it. But we're in charge. We're in charge. So they're looking to us to fix it. 
and they are frustrated, and I don't blame them. If you ever were raised in a household where someone in the house, when a recession hit, lost their job, you understand the frustration and anger they feel. We are in charge. We have turned it around. We have, but for the local, um, uh, the, in the last 15 months, we've created 1.7 million jobs, not nearly enough. And it's been offset by the failure of the Republicans to support the stimulus efforts we had to do counter-cyclical help for the counties and the cities and the states. And so they've laid off 300,000 teachers. They've laid off. So it has net. It's not, you know, it's been, we've taken a hit. But I think what they understand is they understand that we've kept it from getting extremely worse. We've made it better, but not good enough. And I think what the 42 percent re re represents is how they feel. They don't think enough has been done. And that's what I think is you're beginning to see focus, David. That's why I think we have to take this to the American people and say, this is what we want to continue to do to keep us on the road. It's like the car's out of the ditch. It's moving along, but it's only chugging along at 25 miles an hour.